An aftermarket exhaust is at the top of most riders mod lists, but what are you really getting with that shiny pipe? And are stock exhausts all just junk anyway? We'll break it down for you in this video from the MC Garage. A lot of people think the stock pipe on their bike is just cobbled together as an afterthought. 20 or 30 years ago, that might have been the case, and if you're riding a bottom dollar bike, that may still be the scenario, but for the vast majority of motorcycles, especially sport bikes and performance machines, the exhaust is actually very carefully engineered. In fact, after the engine, the exhaust system usually soaks up the most R&D resources. That's because the pipe is critical to the bike's performance, its sound, its look, and of course its compliance with various noise and emissions regulations. Don't underestimate your stock exhaust, because every component has been designed to fulfill a specific purpose. There is a lot more going on there than meets the eye. The headers are pretty straightforward, but multi-cylinder bikes often have these crossover tubes. They're there to harness pressure waves in neighboring pipes to broaden the spread of power. On some bikes, there's even a valve in the crossover, so they're only linked at certain RPM. Further downstream, the header pipes merge and funnel into the collector. This massive contraption here does the bulk of the baffling and houses the catalytic converter. In this case, there are actually three of them, and it provides the volume and routing that's needed to attenuate noise to an acceptable level. Fuel-injected bikes will have one or more of these O2 sensors, which are kind of amazing. They analyze the exhaust gas and transmit info back to the ECU so the computer can make minor fuel adjustments for things like air temperature and altitude. The next major component we come to is this servo-controlled valve just before the muffler. By opening and closing, it regulates the back pressure upstream in the system, and by doing that, you can flatten the torque curve. Sometimes the valve is also used to quiet the exhaust to meet noise regulations, but if you think that thing is just there to make the sound testers happy, think again. Manipulating back pressure has a huge impact on engine performance, and similar technology is used in MotoGP to improve mid-range power. Finally, you've got the muffler, which is gonna have some packing stuffed in around the core to further soak up sound. More and more though, it's the bread box under the engine that's responsible for all of the muffling and the gas cleanup. So this guy, he's kinda just there for looks. Because of that, some bikes like the RC390 or the FZ09 don't even bother with a traditional muffler. As you can see, stock exhaust is a lot more than just some slapped together pipes. And while most manufacturers pour a ton of effort into designing a good system, it's still heavily compromised due to the fact they have to conform to all those rules and regulations. That is where aftermarket pipes come in. Aftermarket pipes, like this Alpha T Beauty from Yoshimura, are designed for closed course competition use only. This label right here makes all the difference because it means this exhaust is not street legal and therefore not restrained by the rules that stock exhaust must follow. So while a stock pipe has to check a bunch of noise and emissions boxes, this pipe's only objectives are to cut weight, add style, improve sound, and boost power. Surprised that I listed power last? Well, it's last on the list because it's not the primary draw these days, or at least it shouldn't be. Again, 20 years ago, you could get major gains by slapping on a pipe. But these days, stock exhausts do a damn good job of offering broad, usable power. There is certainly still some room to improve performance, but if you're gonna install a full exhaust system like this, you absolutely have to do it in conjunction with a fuel controller like a Power Commander. If you're not tuning your fuel to match your new system, you're not only leaving power on the table, but you're probably causing your bike to run lean. That means crappy throttle response, increased engine temperature, and lots of popping on diesel. In my opinion, the single biggest draw to an aftermarket pipe is weight savings. A stock exhaust has a ton of stuff on it, plus it's huge. Without a catalytic converter, a bulky bread box, or a back pressure valve, an aftermarket exhaust can slash pounds off your bike. This Alpha T system for the new Yamaha YZF R6 weighs 11 pounds. Compare that to the stock system at a whopping 22 pounds. Any weight you can remove from your motorcycle is gonna make it handle better. Plus, installing an aftermarket pipe beats the hell out of going on a diet. There's also a lot more style and attention to detail in the aftermarket. Welds are more precise. There are nice touches like jacketed springs, polished pipe sections, and of course, a trick muffler. 
Fancy finishes like carbon fiber and titanium are rarely available from the factory, but they're pretty common on aftermarket systems and some companies really take it to the next level. Aftermarket pipes are also considerably louder, which some people like. Here's the sound of an R6 with a stock exhaust. Now compare that to the sound of the Alpha T. It sounds sweet at idle and fantastic at full song on a straightaway, but race pipes are obnoxiously loud on the street. They're also illegal on account of that whole race use only sticker. But if you want a little more sound and a whole lot more style, Yoshimura actually offers EPA and carb compliant slip-on mufflers. And in my opinion, for street bikes, a slip-on muffler is definitely the way to go. They're cheaper, a whole lot easier to install, and they probably won't require an expensive fuel controller. To summarize, your stock exhaust deserves respect for juggling a bunch of difficult jobs. And aftermarket pipes are good for saving a bunch of weight, improving sound and style, and possibly boosting power if you tune your fueling to match. So that's it for this video from the MC Garage. I hope that clears up the debate of the whole stock versus aftermarket thing. And if you like what you saw, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can catch this and all of our other shows. Until next time, ride safe.